grow. Grow. Grow! I don't think it's gonna grow. I'm already hungry. You just ate. What's happening, my friends? This is Mabel. And if you would like your own Mabel, you can shop sportsmansguide.com no, and use... No cow. That's Sportsman's Guide. I'm being told Sportsman's Guide is not selling cows anymore. They never did, John. Well, I think that's kind of lame. They're still selling, like, the hunting accessories and firearms and ammunition and survival gear and stuff, though. And the War Poet coupon code still works. Yeah. But no cows. I think they should have cows. Comment down below if you think Sportsman's Guide should start selling cows. I, for one, am going to go ahead and upvote that. Sportsmansguide.com, code WARPOET, hashtag sell cows. Cows are good. What's happening, folks? John Level Warrior Poet Society, and by popular demand, I've brought in Mrs. Poet to uh, hang out and do a video hey with guys. us. Hey, yeah. guys. Yeah. So not great. not a fun video today, mm. but I'm going to go ahead and hit you with a, a, a solid bullet of truth. And here it is. We are nine meals away from anarchy. Now, I didn't come up with this. A guy named Alfred Henry Lewis in 1906 said this because he recognized no matter how chummy you are with friends or neighbors, if your kids were starving, your pantry empty and grocery stores cleared out, there is almost nothing you wouldn't do to feed your kids. I mean, that could be crime. That could be all kinds of terrible stuff. And what we want to do in this video is kind of soberly approach some real big red flag warning signs we see and make sure that you guys in our community, our folks, Warrior Posts are prepared for whatever may come in the future. So what we're going to talk about in kind of this twofold video is the impending crisis, some signs we've seen, things in the news, things we're hearing from friends and farmers, and then how to go about preparing for it in a calm, convicted way without panic. So, right. and yeah. As we're preparing for this video, Miss Poet gets a text. Go ahead and read that from a local farmer. We get our mm -hmm. cows and stuff from them, and they're teaching us. We get us. our, yeah, some beef, and um, yeah, we're learning a lot about homesteading from and them. We're not good at homesteading, and so, so we're growing a bunch of stuff. You see it behind us, and we've killed more stuff than we've grown, so. So I was asking her about signs of a food shortage, and she says, it's already here. There's shortages on feed, fertilizer, the whole food chain is feeling the effects. Of course, that includes diesel for driving tractors, but uh, she says many farmers are selling their cattle because they fear they won't be able to feed them this winter. And that's the first I've heard of that, but we'll go into more stories on the ag front. What I wanted to start with was just an um, anecdotal story of my memory of my great-grandmother. As a kid, I remember after she passed, um, she was such a prepper, but it was just normal lifestyle for her back then. She lived through the Great Depression. So when we were clearing out her home, her garage, after she passed, this is what we found. A huge chest freezer in her garage carport area just stacked, I mean, to the brim with frozen food. So bags, packages, boxes, you could barely open the freezer, get it shut again. And then her pantry was just can after can after can. Some store-bought, some uh, home canned goods with like rusty lids. You could tell they'd been there a few decades when she had passed in the early 90s. So she was ready. Yeah. She was prepared. She had stocked up. She had stored um, because she had lived through such a time when food was scarce and hard to come by. Right, I love the yeah. story. However, immediately I start thinking how folks who are watching this video will kind of disconnect from what we're saying because there's this enemy, this incredulity that, the, I, well, I, I see it's happened in the past, but there's no way it could happen in the future. And when I think about your grandmother who was stockpiling, great, great yeah. grandmother yeah. who was stockpiling stuff, yeah. she lived through the roaring 20s. Right. It was a time of economic boom to be upset by a great depression that no one saw coming. Right. that they thought, wow, we are prosperity, prosperity gearing up, and then a big boom. And whether it's a world war or a famine or shortages, whatever, we always seem to be caught on our heels over and over by saying, because we don't remember it recently, mm -hmm. it can never happen in the future. So mm -hmm. please don't allow that to click your brain off and say, can't happen, won't happen. I'm like, man, that is, it is certain to happen at some point. We think it's upon us. Now you just mentioned 
cattle prices and mm -hmm. beef. What were you telling me about this morning with chickens and eggs and stuff? Uh, egg prices are about double what they were last summer. So just a generic store brand cart carton of eggs last summer was about $1.40. Now it's about $2.60 and that's expected to rise. There's also been a cases of avian flu. So even if there was just a suspicion of a few cases in a flock, the whole flock gets put down. What was that? There was one bird that was suspected tested. And about two million were two, destroyed. And they yes. didn't even do a run-up test. It was just immediately killed two million birds. Yes. Coupled with those clues of just disappearing animals mm -hmm. that we depend on for mm -hmm. food is stuff like rising cost of diesel, and scarcity of diesel. America runs on diesel. Everything around you, whatever you buy, got there by like a boat or a big truck that runs on diesel. And at some point when it becomes so scarce or so expensive, things start falling off. Furthermore, replenishing grocery stores of most folks get all their food from grocery stores. So right. if grocery stores clear out, which we've seen it happen already in our- Right, a couple years ago with the pandemic. That's right. They just so. cleared out. And so really some items in a grocery store are just stacked, you know, a few days out they're replenished. Other stuff is two weeks out. So you imagine trucks just stop moving a little bit. All it would take is just a temporary snafu and your grocery stores are empty of key items. And then that freaks everyone out and they're like, oh no, famine. And then everyone rushes the door because they're freaking out like the toilet paper disappearing. It's because yeah. everyone just freaked out and then bought up everything. And now we went from a minor crisis to a major crisis. I mean, there's even weirder stuff of like all the fires and the plants. Yeah, there's been just a growing list of um, warehousing and factories destroyed. Two person planes are crashing into food factories and it's just all these little strange events. And some of the wealthiest Americans are buying up farmland and no. have an agenda it seems like to replace regular beef with synthetic beef, things like this. So the powers that be um, seem to have a hand in what's going on too, possibly. For my part, any one of these variables wouldn't be, you know, astronomically, you know, pressing to me. But when I look at all of it put together, I'm kind of like, oh, that, that's a clue. That makes me feel really nervous. And I don't know whether our worst fears will be realized. I think so. Or maybe we just stock up a little bit and we're not as fearful. And if nothing happens, oh, we're all the better. But if something does happen, it means my family gets to survive. And, and we're not where we want to be, but we've been making lifestyle changes for quite a while, really about a year and a half ago, we went into overdrive, right? Right. Yep. We were on our anniversary trip and uh, this guy's watching a video sent by his sister and it's a long video. He finishes watching it and goes, we're moving. And so like, okay, yeah. land, here we come. We had always talked about going to land, but it was go time. You just felt the current events were um, aligning in such a way that we needed to uh, get out of suburbia and start here. But we do also want to talk about how, if that's not possible for everyone, there are things that you can do to prepare. Right. Yeah. Well, so. For you, you, first, we had a willingness to see that stuff's happening that's scary to us. And yes. as a protector provider of like, I really want to be able to provide. And I don't know how to do that in suburbia. But I had to ask my wife, who needed to be willing to make a radical lifestyle change, because we went from a renovated home that we really liked. It was nice, you know, and we're in a neighborhood and we know everybody and we're really close to our church and we're really close to my work, just kind of down the street. And we had to move from this renovated, nicer home and we downgraded our lifestyle. Our home is smaller and it is not nearly as nice. And the idea is, is we downgraded our standard and quality of living so that we could buy chickens and some land and stuff well, so i'd say quality of the four walls around us but our quality of life has gone up that's well said right good job good job good <laughs> because distinction. of the land and and just the lifestyle to raise our boys on but yeah we've been thinking about the future and preparing trying to grow some of our own food trying our hand at some of our own uh animals right raising a flock of laying hens for eggs. And then we've even got um, grass-fed beef if we needed to butcher, but I love the cows. And now they have calves. But yep, true <laughs> I story. Sneak that I just <laughs> delivered a calf. It was being born back. So now yeah. I'm officially no longer a city boy. You can mark it Yeah, he's down. a farmer now. I'm, I mean, this is legit. Uh, he was coming out Breach. back feet first. 
and he was just chilling. He wasn't coming out of there, and his legs were kicking a lot at first, and then a little bit less, and then not at all. I'm like, I got to get this guy. So I ripped him out, and he wasn't really, I wasn't seeing a, a good uh, rise and fall in the chest. So I started doing compressions, and I clear his airway, and you know, shake him a bit, and then he kind of comes to, and I saved that. I am That's a, amazing. I'm a country boy now, It's amazing, right? yeah. God had you go out and check on the cattle just at that moment. I saved him so, so. I could eat a bunch of hamburger later. Yeah, that might be true. I mean, it's the circle of life here. For your part, guys, you need to first recognize there is some ugly and scary stuff happening. And, and your first part of the battle is just wrapping your head around it and getting over that bias that refuses to believe the clues around us that oh, yeah. the horrible thing might actually be happening. You can't bury your head in the sand, right? No, Not at this point. No one wants to recognize that bad is coming. The second thing is be ready to to have it cost you something because there's a bunch of reasons uh, to not change uh, the thing. And we had to sacrifice to get where we're at. You don't know my life. You don't know what I had to sacrifice and, 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 and what we had to do to do this. But it was very difficult. It was very taxing on us, but we made the change. Mm -hmm. uh, so for our part, uh, you may have access to land and you may not. We want to speak to both of us, but both of those options. But before we get into, I don't have land, I'm stuck with what I got. Before we speak to that, we wanted to be able to just talk about some of the stuff that we've done. We've gotten chicken, so we eat our own eggs mm -hmm. every day. We got mm -hmm. alpacas wandering behind us. Yeah, Cusco's been in the shot. Um, yeah, and he's great for fertilizer. And then their fleece, we're gonna send off and have some blankets. And uh, we have the cows and uh, the horses, which he claims they can pull carts if need be. So if society breaks down to a cart pulling level, we're ready. You know, we're ready. So he claims yep. that is, <laughs> that's a prep there. I have three horsepower that gets infinity miles per gallon. So, so one thing is what we want is sustainable food. So we got our greenhouse, which we planted already and then everything died because we suck at greenhouse and it's just too hot. It's well, too hot in the summer. So it was yeah. getting up to 122 in there. So you just can't use it without a big expensive shade cloth in right. the summer, which um, we just weren't willing to do that. So I think it's a um, fall, winter, spring item. Right. So we just have a, this big garden behind us and a smaller one up right. there by the house. Right. But yeah, um, and we're teaching the boys how to plant seeds, how to grow the plants, how to harvest, when to harvest. And we're learning too, so this is just. But now we're actually new for us. We're reaping the benefits. We are yeah. eating our own food that we grow yeah. or hatch every single day, yes. and that feels good. Yes. We're about to pick up a part of a cow, which we're going to deep freeze, and that's because we're growing and selling cows. Yeah. You know, and I'm so I'm trying to learn canning, so I've got some buddies right. that are going to try to mentor me in that. I'm pretty nervous about that skill, but I'm also excited because that's kind of been a goal I've had is to learn. Right not only how to um, pick out your seeds, what to grow, how to grow it, how to harvest it, but then how to save it. So that's right. a big process. So I'm still learning that too. Some folks may think, well, like, well, if something went sideways, perhaps I just hunt or fish. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, believe me, everyone's gonna have that idea too. It won't take long for our deer populations to just be eviscerated because everyone wants food. You can't get food, well, I'll go hunt for it. And so that could be a, a pretty good stop gap for a month or two, who knows? Uh, but we could really get into some trouble there. That, that may not be the surefire longer term plan that you'd want it to be. I would say for everyone though, you'd need a, a temporary stop gap of what happens if something bad happened and you're not ready to flip the switch like we're not to full time eating your own food that you produce on your own homestead. Well, you need to have emergency food supplies. And I wanna go ahead and show you some of ours, and this is a work in process, but you notice we've got all kinds of tubs and containers, stuff like just simple white rice, brown rice and beans, that stuff could feed us pretty unhappily for a very long time, <laughs> but we could we survive. We rice and beans, babe. We lived in Latin America for four years. Right, but from a guy who's yeah. eaten over 1,000 MREs, MREs, even yeah. if you love the chicken tetrazzini, you eat it enough and you will not love the chicken yeah. tetrazzini anymore. You're it's done. just, yeah. it's too bad. It's too yeah. much. And so, but we varied it. We've got all kinds of dehydrated food, like yep. soup mixes and um, dehydrated fruits and vegetables. And yep. yeah, so we, we've got a little bit of variety. And some of that stockpiling stuff is good for what, 20, 25 years? And then yeah. we've got um, other food with a, a shorter shelf life. 
right. to kind of mix it up. And you kind of have to switch that stuff out, keep an eye on it. One of the best bang for your buck, emergency stop gaps with food and something that's just an easy button. You can get like a one month supply, three months, six months, a full year supply. However you want to do it is with My Patriot Supply. We have an affiliate agreement with them. So if you want to help us out, support us who brought you the info, please look down below in this video's uh, description and you'll find a link and that'll allow you to get a discount that's good for you and some help for us as well. But that's what I believe in my own uh, cost analysis of most amount of calories per dollar and doesn't taste like uh, rotten death. Uh, that that's that's the ticket. And so yeah, most of our stuff death, so. is don't eat rotten Look death. That up. Look that up. You want to avoid that at all. That costs. does sound terrible. Yeah. Now, what happens if someone's in suburbia? Because before you started your journey of growing our food, even when we were in a neighborhood mm -hmm. without land. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. was your answer there? Yeah, so even if you have just an apartment balcony, you can start growing food in containers. There's a lot of items that can be grown in pots that are very useful and can supplement your food, like tomatoes, carrots, even potatoes, and even some bigger vining stuff like squash, which is a really good, um, Thing to beef up uh, a side for your meal. So you can look that up. Um, what is the best vegetables for container gardening? I also had this thing called a tower garden that um, it would grow more food in a vertical space. But hydroponics. So hydroponics, it's always watered yeah. and that yeah. thing grew so quick. We ate Massive, lettuce yeah. every day yeah. out of this. It would grow a lot of Just plants. one tower garden would yeah. do it. So I mean that was just on a deck. Yeah. So even with very limited space, like I said, even an apartment balcony, you can grow something. So also probably look into um, purchasing seeds and then researching what do I do with this? How do I grow? Because I did read somewhere someone's like, great, everyone's buying seeds. You have no idea what to do with them. Yeah. So actually beef up on YouTube. I know one of my favorite channels is Roots and Refuge. Yeah. Um, they have a great just wealth of information about gardening and you can just start from there. But seeds are so inexpensive. And what if one day they're not? And what if one day they're super hard to find? go ahead and get you a big stockpile of seeds and know how to grow just a few things. Start out small. Research maybe five things that you can grow in pots. That's great. Um, if you have more of a backyard, you can even start raised beds like we did, or you can do tilling the ground. It's up to you depending on your climate, your soil drainage, all that stuff. Um, but uh, one, one gal I follow says, the seeds want to grow. So if you do your best, you probably will grow a few things and learn more and more year by year. Yep. And it's it's a fun process too, so yeah. Unless you're the one that has to move tons of dirt to fill raised beds and stuff. Ah, that's why we have two and sons. Then they shoveled all that out, Yeah, right? well this dad <laughs> lifted a lot of dirt as well. Another thing I'd encourage you guys to do is go ahead and get one of those bigger deep freezers and just fill it, pack it full with food. We are about to, in the next couple of days, go pick up a third of a cow right. and uh -huh. uh, put that girl right. in there. Even though we have our own cows, we like them for now. They're, I, well, they're I don't wanna, emergency cows. I don't want to so. butcher them. That's we a mess them. of uh, processing big animals yeah. is yucky awful and there's some skill involved and so oh, i would rather would, not have to but we drop it at the processor right right yeah but yeah, i'm talking I mean, like what happens the, yet. yeah i could it'd just be yeah be messy it, well, one day yeah. maybe we'll do meat chickens where um i've got some friends that do that they just get like 30 chicks they raise them for about three months and at the three month mark they slaughter them freeze them and then they've got their own chicken for uh the year or yep. two, so all kinds of stuff you can do to prepare. You gonna talk about water or solar or that kind of thing? Yeah, I'd like to just kind of limit the whole video to food shortage, but those other options, she's exactly right of make sure you gotta have water, you gotta have some energy, you gotta have some shelter, and, and really the prep that allows all other things to be kept and utilized is security. Security is your most important prep, and that means not just training and tools that allow you to do security stuff, but also community, and that's the only way you keep all of your other preps. Uh, so. Otherwise, you may be prepping for the very first band of marauders or right. folks that come around and just want what you've gotten. You don't really have much of a recourse. If you make some small steps of preparation, you don't have to do everything all at once. But there's yes. just a month of, you know, 
long lasting 25 year expiration date food in a bucket and if I never use it, okay, awesome. I've got awesome. it. But you just don't wanna be in that place where something crazy happens next week and you haven't been to the store in a few days and you're just out. Just that is an easy situation to avoid, right? You'd like yeah. your wife to not look at your eight year old, nine year old son or daughter and say, well, daddy sucked at planning and so we don't have any food now. Now on the security note, if you guys wanna do something fun, I made another video that's basically a security test. Check out that video and see how you rank on it. Link down below in description. But again, this is outside of the scope of this video. Let's keep it with uh, food. What is the closing thought you have for these folks? Some encouragement. This is not a fun video. Not a fun video, but I don't think there's any cause to panic. Just like we were saying at the beginning, just a calm conviction that this is something that needs to be done. I need to prepare. I need to plan. Um, and then there's just really a sense of um, peace and security when you know that you have just a little tucked away for a rainy day, but it's the lifestyle and getting there has been pretty fun. Working with our hands, um, knowing where some of our food comes from, and seeing our kids work hard so that they aren't rotten is yep. <laughs> wonderful as well. And it's um, it's just been a really cool journey so far. Yep. Yeah, Glad I'm to enjoying be it. You. So yeah, there's been sacrifices, but I think we've really uh, traded up in some ways too. Yep. Very hard to do a video with Cusco. He was over your shoulder humming for a while. Hey, Cusco. I can put him in the barn. No, it's okay. We're, we're done with the video. Now all we have to do is say, hey, guys, make sure you check down below this video for relevant links. Really appreciate you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and share this video. Share, share, share. We will need community in the days ahead. So make sure you're sharing with folks that you would like to be in that community and folks that you care about as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, Train Hard, Train Smart, and... Thanks for stopping by. Ver stay classy. Veronica Corningstone. <laughs> You stay classy, <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> Guys, we're closing out the summer season with an epic giveaway called the Summer Ugh, Line. Summer Shutdown Super Shooter Giveaway. Summer Shutdown Super Shooter Giveaway. All you guys have to do is click down below this video. There's a link. It's going to take you to a landing page. If you give us just a little bit of information, you may be the winner of our grand prize. A Molly double belt rig, our new adjustable WPS rifle sling, a stock sock rifle attachment, our packy sack grab and go bag, and our latest snapback. It's all that stuff, which I totally didn't read while we were off camera. Check down below in the link. Enter to win and enjoy this video. We're living in uncertain times. We have pandemics, natural disasters, civil unrest, and even war. And you need to be ready for this. I'm EJ Snyder, extreme survivalist, 25 year army combat vet. I'm bringing you my years of knowledge and experience to help you in this situation. Yeah, sure, you probably see me out there on Naked Afraid, Dual Survival, and First Man Out. But I'm more than just a wilderness survivalist. I'm a total survivalist. And that doesn't mean just being out there in the wilderness. That means here at home too. And we've put together the ultimate bug in and home defense guide. In this guide is critical information that can save you and your loved one's life. In this guide, things included are a get home bag, how to set your vehicle up to get yourself home. And when you get home, how to set that up for defense to protect your loved ones, all your supplies and things you really need when trouble comes knocking on your door. This guide is designed for everyone, no matter what your background or your circumstances, whether you're living in the city or in a rural area, whatever your budget is, this is the framework for you to defend your home and be prepared for anything. Why are you just sitting there on the couch? You gotta start planning.